All right. This video is time to talk about it a bit more. Hi, Misha here. And while I still don't have a range report ready, I thought I would talk about some changes I've been making to the FEG HD18, the Dragonov SVD, or Tiger, Tiger, in 7.62x54R. So in this video, I'm going to talk about those changes and talk about some accessories I picked up for this, as well as some extra mags. These kind of came from a few different sources. The mags were from uh, Arms of America. Many of the accessories are from either RTG or Russian surplus parts net, Russian parts net. And of course, the rifle was imported by Trident. So yeah, I'm going to talk about why I made the changes I made and just, you know, kind of a progress report update to give you something until we can uh, finally get to the range with this thing. The truth of the matter is, I considered shooting it a week or so ago, but I, I just didn't really want to. Not with the uh, factory set up the way it was. I wanted to shoot it when it was set up the way I wanted and be more convenient. And with that, let's talk first about the new handguards and why I decided to change them out. Before we get started, I wanted to say just a couple of things real quick. First, as far as the camera work, it's just me here, so I'm doing what I can do. Remember, I'm blind, so when someone is available to run the camera for me again, trust me, that'll be a relief for me and you both. But, as for now, I am doing it the best I can, so apologies if it's not up to scratch. If it's not, hey, you can always go and watch a Minecraft channel or cat videos. I do that quite a bit. <laughs> Other things, you know, there's still stuff going on about the HD18. Not getting into that in this video. It's really not material, not relevant, because as a dealer, I bought a gun. And I'm enjoying this gun, and that's kind of what this video is about. I've enjoyed customizing it, and I've enjoyed accessorizing it. So in this video, I'm going to kind of talk about my experiences doing both of those things and share some of the stuff I picked up from Russian Surplus Net and Arms of America, and even from Robert RTG. So that's kind of the point of this video here. And finally, because it was going to be on a coming video, I've got a Mosin M9159, which is basically an M38 style carbine here. And uh, I just thought I would set it kind of next to the the uh, Dragonov type here, the SVD, showing that even though the SVD is meant to be a DMR, even nearly a sniper rifle, it's not a heck of a lot longer than what was considered a short carbine during the Great Patriotic War. So anyway, guys, I just thought I'd make a couple of quick announcements. And I will cut back to the main meat of this here video. And I appreciate you tuning in. And again, just if you could, please bear with me. Let's get on with it. At first, the Hungarian handguards may seem the least offensive and I would agree with that but I really like the synthetic look of the modern Russian here and after getting these off I'm glad I made the change it was very easy to do hopefully here you can show if you look at the ends the Hungarian handguards are smidgen longer that's because the Russians have kind of a metal end cap 
and the Hungarian wood does not. And if we take these apart, we'll see that these are just bare wood. Not a lot of adornment, aside for some basic end capping, no heat shield, pretty light, lightweight wood. One of the claims that FEG made was these slots could be used for a uh, M-lock. I don't believe that. I don't believe they would be strong enough. It might be the right size, but yeah, simply not that durable. Replacing the handguards, they dropped right in. There's a lever up here. You just press it in and rotate it down, and then this end cap slides off. Getting the Hungarian handguards off was a little taxing because of how tightly fit they were. Because, well, wood. But then the Russian, which I actually have a second set here. Pop right on with uh, very little fuss or muss, as it were. And you'll notice these have... Some kind of inside, plus again, the ends are metal, just much tougher, more durable piece. And so, I'm glad I did. It was very easy to do, no fitting was required, and it just kind of goes for the, the look I was looking for. Next, let's talk about the accompanying buttstock and its cheek piece here. From the outset, I knew this buttstock was going to have to go. Having kind of the swelly grip is fine. The cheek piece looks right, but this fastener, it's uh, pretty, pretty weak. So, very easy to take this thing off, which is not necessarily what you want on a cheek piece. It does have this rubber recoil pad, but it looks very commercial. And it also uses these spacers, kind of line fillers. Which don't exactly impress me. I don't know where I put the bottom cap. It's somewhere. But of course the major difference. The major issue for me. Is the length of the stock. As many pointed out in the first video. This thing is. Ridiculously. Long. Let me check this out. That's. Uh, trying to line these up properly. Yeah. And it just has this big hump, and it just doesn't look right. I'm glad they did put the sling bar in. That's good. You can tell they started with the SVD shape, but, yeah. It's not quite right. Way too long. One issue here, this is held in with two screws. You have one in the front. See, there you go. You know, the cheap piece would work its way off when I unfastened it. And this has this kind of a polymer base and everything. I think it mostly has to do with the fact of this cutout's undersized on the stock. Anyway, there is the front hole there for a wood screw. But then there's this main hole that runs through the pistol grip. There, and it stops pretty shallow inside there, meaning you have a very long screw which connects to a shaft in the receiver up here, so it's a machined screw, not a wood screw. And the one from this stock is way too long for a standard SVD stock, and of course it's not a standard pitch or pattern. So, 
something has to be made done. Uh, some people will kind of shim it. Other people, you'll have to go to the hardware store and figure out an alternative. But yeah, I knew the stock would have to be replaced for my own shooting comfort. Unless you're seven foot tall. That's just way too long. That's actually why I have two sets of handguards. <laughs> I picked up a set and then a second set came with the buttstock here. So, yeah. yeah I have two. I have a spare. Someone might need one. I might need one. So the third change I made has to do with the front end here. So here is the original front sight assembly. I think at first people were kind of excited. Now, in the box, instead of having this flash hider, or as they call it, muzzle brake, it has just a simple nut. And this is on 5 8 by 24 threads. There's a rivet put in that keeps this piece from going back. But once you take the rivet out, there's another screw in the back here that you can undo. And that retracts this pin, which lets your flash header screw on and off. And I think a lot of people were happy to have threads on a barrel so they could do a suppressor. But happiness did not last long. First off, this front sight has these drift adjustable screws for windage. But unless you really lock tight them, they're not going to hold anything like a zero. In addition, more than a few people reported the metal here was broken off or malformed. And me, well, this happened on the bottom. See this? Hopefully. <laughs> Flat on the bottom, and there's a small pin in front. And that small pin is uh, all that's holding that front side on to this display. So much so that on mine, hang on a second, I'm going to sit you down. It broke free to do this. That pin tore through this front lip. very easily because it's extremely thin metal there and it's circular not even <laughs> so yeah this front side is sh is for shit the metal base it's on is cast and for shit and since the threads are on this collar people realize there's virtually no way this is going to be symmetrical concentric for a suppressor meaning it's useless. And if you notice, the pins that would hold it onto a barrel are both way in the back, here and here. And they're actually very shallow. They too have very little metal on the top. So not much meat holding this on. Meaning this thing, it's worthless. So everyone's decided to replace it. And we have a few Russian options. This is the SVDS style short flash shiner. And originally this is what I was going to use. But then I picked up one of the longer ones. And decided to go this way. Now I haven't had the sight fully drifted over yet because I was going to have a friend help me get it bore sighted in. I got it on. Sight's in there. It'll be good. Mostly got the pin seated. The front pin on this I'd like to get seated just a little bit deeper. The rear pin is good to go. 
And yeah, it would have been nice to pick up one of these that had the intact bayonet lug, but those are hard to come by, so maybe one day I will. But for right now, I'm just happy to get rid of that thing and have a reliable front sight. And having an authentic style flush hider, much sturdier, and it makes the gun quite a bit shorter. And actually this front sight went on quite easily. It uh, required a few whacks with a rubber mallet to get it fully seated. It definitely fitted tighter than the one from FEG. And the pins set deeper. And they went in through their uh, taper pins. And they went in just fine. So if I didn't know any better, I would say this was exactly made for a Russian style front sight flash hider device certainly does kind of complete the overall look of this critter and makes it shorter by close to an inch on both ends which means it can actually fit in the factory case again so with that let's talk about some of the accessories that i picked up from a few different places now the HD-18 came with this, if I didn't know any better, Russian scope cover. And of course we have a pretty standard 4 power battery operated optic here. And I thought to go with this nice cover pouch, we should have a mag pouch. This one has some honest uh, wear on it from use this is from Russian surplus net and I found something really neat inside that I'd mention real quick this little book now this isn't a dear diary it's a small little yeah, it's hard to do one-handed, I apologize. It's a small little Soviet-era log book with inspection stamps. The first one was dated 78. And the next one we looked at was 83 dated. I just thought it was neat. And I found this in the bottom of this pouch. <laughs> Pretty standard style pouch here. Also included with the HD-18 was a Russian style tool kit which yes I have used on the front side here this little hook is for it and it's got a sight tool and pretty standard stuff inside here it fits in this top pocket kind of a two-piece thing then we have some mags we'll look at those in a minute because they're from Arms of America and then there's a section for a three-piece cleaning rod. This is kind of neat because it's tri triangular. It's sectional as you see, hopefully. And of course they all screw together. Also, inside the pouch, there's a small pocket for the oiler. There's a couple of small pockets for some lens cover cloth things for the scope. Scope adjusting tool here. And just generally space inside 
for even the uh, the optic if you want to put it in there. Anyone who has a PSL from Romania, you get this style of pouch. So with that, let's check out the mags inside it. What I got from AOA. See if they kind of live up to the hype. First off, here is the spare mag that came with the HD18. You got two of them. And note that it does have a polymer follower. I asked the one person I know, at least quickly to hand, who's really into these uh, BFG movies, Flander, if he knew when they went from the polymer, or for, excuse me, from the metal to the polymer, he wasn't sure. But it makes sense in a military environment having a piece of material that won't get stuck to the sides. Sure, sure does make sense. Body, of course, the floor plate, that's all still metal. So here are the mags I received from AOA. Now all fit the gun just fine. Followers move fine. And they have some kind of neat interesting markings these came out of Hungary but on the AOA website they report that very much likely they are Russian which yeah that would seem to be the case so hopefully Showing you something here. No real dents. Just honest wear from use. I suspect they will clean up fine. Good workaday mags. And notice these all have the original metal pattern follower and also notice that the body style between the HD18 mag and these well let's just say they certainly look like they were cast from the same mold how about that now I always like to have slings on my rifles and luckily the SVD uses the same as an AK and I have several different AK slings in my parts bin so I just grabbed a Russian I had a couple of Russians left and finally another piece I grabbed from Russian surplus is this quite interesting modern carry case kind of reminds me of a laptop case has a side pocket here for a magazine And it has straps, either small handles or big adjustable ones, which can double as shoulder straps. So effectively, this can be a backpack. I don't know. I thought it was neat. And uh, how it works is kind of interesting. So let's bring the rifle back down. We've ignored it long enough. And put it in the case so how this works there's these kind of nylon extension that comes out for your barrel and also a much smaller one for your stock there's actually a secondary little pouch here for accoutrement and i presume it lays on this side because on the flap here there's kind of an extra thick area which I presume is a protector for the uh, handle there's also plenty of space for our scope to be mounted there is a, a strap here and here to seal it up more velcro fastenings so that you can if not make it water tight certainly make it resistant 
And then if we had our uh, scope on, we'd be sitting pretty good. Again, we can put it whichever direction we want, but because of how the protector was, I just assumed. Could be wrong. Could have it upside down. Doesn't matter. Just thought I would show you this kind of case. I believe it's a Stava makes it, but I could be wrong. It's just kind of for a modern DMR scoped rifle. And again, it's got all these little flaps so you can kind of seal it up. Like this goes in here. And what have you. I don't know. I kind of just like accessories and gear like that. And it's a relatively modern rifle. So I thought having kind of the modern case would be would be neat. And here we are back out. Now with the scope on her here. Figure I had to do it once. You know what makes this rifle all worthwhile? They don't just include one AA battery for you. For the scope. You get two whole AA batteries. So you get a spare battery. That makes it worthwhile, right? <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. But I noticed that. Hey, at least you do get batteries. Could be worse. So this is pretty much how I will probably roll with this gun. I do like it with the shorter, kind of, to me, more modern style of flash hider. Bayonet lug, meh. If one comes along, otherwise I won't lose sleep over it. Having the adjustable gas regulator is nice. It is just a standard two position. Now originally we thought these would have a slightly heavier profile barrel. But as time has shown, it's the standard SVD Tigger profile. And we thought these had a 1 and 11 twist, but they seem to have a 1 in 12.6 twist, about a 1 in 320 millimeter, which means they will probably prefer lighter ammo over super heavy stuff. Something in the, you know, 149 to 178 grain thought. As far as the polymer handguards, it's almost a must. I just like them better. I like the kind of the overall look it gives it. I like the better heat dissipation. The wood stock, I'm not sure on. I got this because it was available. And it's certainly a nice piece of wood as for what it is. But I don't know if I'll rock this or if I come across a polymer for a decent price. If I'll switch over, originally I was definitely going to go all polymer. But I have to admit, kind of the transitional look, say late 90s, early 2000s, yeah, isn't bad. Isn't bad at all. So I'll have to have to kind of sleep on it for a bit. But now it's, it's ready to go. I have the spare mags, a few random spare parts, full cleaning toolkit. And even kind of a neat modern carry case that would probably double as a laptop bag. Or at least could pass for one if you didn't have the rifle sticking out of the sides. That does kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of amuse me. So what do you think? Just to close out the video, because it was kind of close to hand, I grabbed my PSL. And I wanted to end by talking about why I have this gun. And why... I have the accessories and pretty much just did a video on doing it. Of course, there's still a thing about the HD-18 and everything that went around it. And it's, it's not really the point here or even something that affects me. The reason I wanted one is it really does wrap up my Russian collection. I have the SGL3194. I have the RPK74M in the form of the Vepper FM RPK74. 
And now I have essentially a very good facsimile of a late style SVD 63 in the form of the HD 18. And the reason is I've I've gotten so much joy over the years out of uh, out of the Segas and the Vepers. Despite everything else and the sanctions and all that jazz, I really just enjoy them. I enjoy having things from Russia because for a long time it seemed like we never really would. And guns like these, like the PSL here, these can come in just um, as you see them. They, they meet the sporting definitions for import. The only thing I've really changed on this one is re-adding the bayonet lug. It had the ring on the barrel. It's just the lug was shaved off and I had a spare lug, so why not? As far as the front sight, this is one that does have the removable brake. Others have the more SVD style where it's a single piece. And I wasn't really looking for a, another PSL. I did buy one back in the day when they were available. But a buddy needed to, to sell his and I knew it was a good shooter. Figured, why not? And uh, yeah, it's a gun I really enjoyed having because it's, it's genuine. Unfortunately, the PSLs do have to come in with a modified receiver because of the third pin. But luckily, SVDs... Tiggers, Tigers, HD-18s, Indian 86s because of the way the trigger pack is not part of the receiver. They can, uh, they can be pretty much as issued because no pesky third pinhole in the receiver to get in the way. And I, I really enjoy accessorizing such guns, finding... The slings or the pouches, getting neat pieces of kit like that triangular sectional cleaning rod, finding little freebies like that old original booklet that was in the pouch. And again, after getting this HD-18 out of the box, I realized I was going to keep it. And at that, I knew I had to customize it. The factory buttstock was just too long. The wooden handguards, eh, but a little chintzy. And the whole front side assembly that it originally came with, nah, that wasn't going to fly. Well, actually it might have. It was attached so loosely, it might have gone flying off during a shooting trip. So, yeah, it was a good excuse just to get a Russian part to replace it. And I'm, I'm perfectly content with the kind of modern... SVDS short flash hider look. I don't know. We all have our own tastes. And one last thing, you know, swapping furniture on a gun like this, you get to know it. You see how it's really put together. And that's only made me more excited to take it out and shoot it. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. It will happen. Just got to get some other ducks in a row, and like I said, I will need a little bit of help from a friend to get this front sight fully drifted over and fully kind of zeroed in. Same goes with our optic here. And I bet we do a comparison with the trusty old PSL sooner or later, too. So, wanted to give you an update it's kind of a midweek chat. Hope everyone out there is doing okay. Believe it or not, last night here we had snow. Yeah, snow on April 19th, April 20th. So, uh, that, that happened. <laughs> but it should be spring soon, hopefully. So let me know what you think. Do you like the modern handguards again on the buttstock i'm a little still in undecided at first i really wanted to go polymer but i'm kind of digging the wood look what would you do would you stick with the wood stock or would you still go on to polymer let me know 
Let me know how you like that little booklet that it came with. Not the gun, of course, with the pouch. Just to kind of remind us all why we got into guns. The sense of community. The sense of sharing a certain passion, a certain hobby. Kind of getting back to basics in a way. And for me personally, nothing screams that more than calm block type firearms. But that's just me. Uh, what what for you kind of takes you back? What what takes you back and to when you first got into guns, got into shooting? What guns, you know, hold a special place in your own heart? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a, let's have a discussion about that. Why not? As always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please check out the link to the Patreon page. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.